Sheldon Plankton is the classic villain from Spongebob who always miserably fails at stealing the Krabby Patty secret formula. Despite draining hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, into various inventions and projects, Plankton has not been able to get the citizens of Bikini Bottom to come to this eating establishment. Given his business failures, one would think that Plankton is a broke bum like Patrick if he's not in millions of dollars of debt already. But I'm here to tell you that Plankton is not just wealthy, but likely the richest resident in the entire Bikini Bottom, and here's why. Well, starting off, we don't have to look very far to realize Plankton's absurd personal wealth. Just take a look at his wife. Plankton has quite literally made a robot wife, which he calls a wired integrated female electroencephalograph. In other words, he created an artificially intelligent robot over a decade before such technology even became known to the general public. One of the first mainstream advanced robots was ASIMO by Honda, which cost no less than $2.5 million. And it should be noted that Karen blows ASIMO out of the water as Karen can generate original thoughts and even feel emotions like anger, fear, and jealousy. As a result, Karen is no doubt worth tens of millions of dollars of research and development, which Plankton could easily sell to various artificial intelligence developers like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and Amazon. And that's not even taking into account how early he was onto the AI scene, which would allow him to sell Karen for hundreds of millions. But that's just the beginning. AI, though quickly growing in relevance, is still mostly reserved for a very niche audience, thus limiting its current profitability. The transportation industry, however, is ginormous and would greatly appreciate Plankton's teleporter. Now, both Plankton and Sandy work together on this to make this invention a reality. So, Plankton should technically get 50% of any revenue that is generated using the machine. In 2019, the airline industry topped $800 billion in revenue. Sandy and Plankton don't have to get directly involved in the business of transporting people and packages at all. Instead, they can just license their technology to companies like Delta, Emirates, UPS, and FedEx. They could essentially be the Boeing or Airbus of the teleportation industry, even if they were only able to work out a 1% royalty with $800 billion in revenue, Sandy and Plankton would receive $8 billion annually or $4 billion each. And that's with the current airline industry revenue. By creating a transportation solution that is essentially instantaneous, we would likely see a large influx of new travelers as well as an increased frequency of travel. On top of this, they could no doubt charge significantly more for this improved mode of transportation. Keeping all of this in mind, Plankton and Sandy could easily profit tens of billions of dollars per year just by licensing their teleportation technology. Next up, we have Plankton's fuel rods. These are just shown for a quick second in the episode Bottle Burglars, but this is actually one of Plankton's most useful inventions. On the spent fuel rods box, we are able to see a skull. And on the cylindrical container right next to it, it warns of toxic waste. So it's safe to assume that these fuel rods are some sort of nuclear energy. Considering how many fuel rods Plankton has exhausted, it seems like he has gotten these rods to be a reliable and safe form of energy. Though energy companies are often ignored as they are usually boring and uninspiring, energy companies are some of the most successful companies in the world. In fact, Taking a look at the top companies by revenue in the world, ranks 2 through 7 go to energy companies. In other words, 6 out of the top 10 companies by revenue are energy companies. Nuclear energy is often looked down upon as it is often associated with nuclear weapons and seen as dangerous. However, over the past several decades, the safety as well as the reliability of nuclear energy has consistently increased. And though nuclear energy is not as useful to everyday people, nuclear energy is especially useful for space companies who need their fuels to last years for long missions. Considering this, with his fuel rods, Plankton could likely score a multi-billion dollar contract with companies like NASA and SpaceX as well as governments around the world. Moving on, we have Plankton's baby gas. This invention is ingenious as it not only allows people to stay young, but it also allows people to accomplish this painlessly. 
The most prominent solution to fight aging today is plastic surgery. Aside from costing hundreds of thousands of dollars per procedure, plastic surgery is often painful as chemicals have to be injected and even surgeries have to be completed. However, with Plankton's baby gas, one doesn't even have to get a shot to enjoy the benefits of this invention. One simply has to waft in some of these miracle fumes and they're younger. Thus, the applications for this are endless and would be highly sought after. Of course, we'll have a bunch of people using it to stay young to party, but this would also allow us to preserve the most valuable people of society. People like Newton, Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Steve Jobs, and more recently, Elon Musk. Plankton's baby gas would be the most valuable product in history as the product itself is not only genius, but it allows other geniuses to continue inventing and developing, thus exponentially increasing the value of the product. By now, you're probably convinced of Plankton's immeasurable wealth, which could potentially even cross the trillion dollar mark. But here's one more invention that really captures the impact of Plankton's inventions, which is Robot SpongeBob. With this invention, Plankton was essentially able to conduct a brain transplant to a robot. This would basically solve every health-related issue that has ever existed. Sure, the baby gas can make people younger, but it doesn't make people healthier and wouldn't reverse disabilities. However, Robot SpongeBob could enable paralyzed people to walk, blind people to see, and deaf people to hear as the only organ required for functionality is the brain. And given the artificial intelligence Plankton was able to develop with Karen, I'm sure he could also figure out a way to fuse the artificial intelligence with Robot SpongeBob, thus also helping people with mental disabilities. Evidently, Plankton's inventions have the ability to revolutionize entire industries such as the industries of artificial intelligence, transportation, and medicine. And that's not even taking into account his more maniacal inventions like his mind-controlling buckets and mind-controlling shampoo, which I'm sure several countries would love to exploit. As a result, Mr. Krabs' millions or whatever squander next to Plankton's billions. Really, the only resident in the Bikini Bottom who could even come close to rivaling Plankton's wealth would be Sandy Cheeks. However, despite his vast wealth, it's clear that Plankton is quite miserable as he is constantly defeated while pursuing his passion of owning a well-known local restaurant. So, for him, money definitely did not make him happy. However, I feel like there is a very simple solution for this. Plankton could just serve something else, as I'm sure people would like a change from Krabby Patties at least once in a while. But that's just what I think. If you guys like the depth of this analysis, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.